How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna make pizza buns. Because what do you do when you love Cinnabons, but also love pizza? You combine them, right? And trust me, this experiment worked out perfectly. They are so, so soft and fluffy, and they taste absolutely delicious. I mean, I may as well call it the ultimate tear and share bread. And it is so, so easy to make, so you're not gonna wanna miss this one. Now let's get to it and see what we need. Now for the dough, we'll need some strong white bread flour, water, yeast, salt and some olive oil, just like a regular pizza dough. For the sauce, we'll need some good quality tinned tomatoes, chopped garlic, a bit of salt, olive oil and oregano. We'll need some pepperoni, I would suggest chopping it up, it makes the job easier. And some grated mozzarella. And that is it, now onto the equipment. We'll need a baking tray with some non-stick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe. We'll also need a rolling pin, a sharp knife, I would suggest using a serrated knife, it makes the job a lot easier. A small pot for cooking the sauce. And I'm going to use my hand blender to blitz the sauce, but if you don't own one, then you can leave the sauce chunky. And speaking of sauce, that's the first thing I'm going to make. Now in a pot, on medium to high heat, add your oil and the garlic. Give it a quick stir and keep cooking it for around 2 minutes or until the garlic starts browning around the edges but don't take it too far otherwise it's gonna go bitter as soon as the garlic starts browning add the rest of the ingredients the salt, the oregano and the tin tomatoes if you don't want to mess around making sauce of course you can buy your sauce pre-made but make sure it's not too runny you want a thick sauce for this recipe that's why after adding the tomatoes I'm gonna stir them around, break them up a little bit I'm gonna keep the sauce cooking for another 15 minutes to reduce it down and make it nice and thick This will prevent it from leaking out when we're trying to roll up the buns And 15 minutes later, as you can see it's nice and thick Almost all of the liquid has evaporated It's only the tomato pulp left over That's exactly what we need I'm gonna pour it into a bowl and blitz it up And as I said earlier, if you don't own a blender, it's totally fine, just keep it chunky now this can be covered up, left on the side to cool down completely. I actually made this sauce a day ahead of time. But you can certainly make it whilst you're waiting for your dough to proof. And speaking of dough, the first thing we need to do is make a pre-ferment or sponge. As you can see my water is at 19 degrees. Normally when I make a dough without sponge, I would use cold water. But because we want the sponge to rise quickly, the water temperature needs to be higher. And to make the sponge, we can use all the water, all of the yeast, and a portion of the total flour, a quarter to be exact. This will give the dough a really nice and airy texture. It's perfect for buns like these. And at this point I realized the spatula is not the best tool for this job, so use a whisk. So because the dough is made up of mostly pre-ferment, meaning that most of the ingredients are in the pre-ferment, the final dough temperature control is slightly different. So we'll leave this to proof at room temperature for around 45 minutes. As you can see, it's nice and bubbly. Don't expect it to rise a lot, because it's runny. But it should become really nice and airy, almost like foam. Let's have a closer look. I mean, you could use this for shaving, right? To save yourself some washing up, make the pre-ferment in a large bowl right from the get-go. I only use a small bowl, because it looks a bit better on video. So let's continue making our dough. Add the salt and the olive oil to the pre-ferment. Now mix it well, you want to dissolve the salt. So let's continue with the temperature control. Obviously, everything that's in the bowl right now is at room temperature. So if I was to use room temperature flour, the final dough temperature would be way too high. So I kept my flour in the fridge overnight. As you can see, it's around 7 degrees Celsius. And this is one way of controlling your dough temperature when using a large proportion of pre-ferment. Now add the flour to the pre-ferment, grab your scraper and mix this to a dough. Mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour. And if the scraper is not doing the job, continue on by hand. Now I'll drop the dough out on the table and start kneading. And this is not too sticky at all, so I'm going to use my regular kneading method. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, then using the fingers of my left hand I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn it and repeat. And once you've done this a few times, the motion will become fluent. It'll be like second nature. And this dough doesn't take a long time to knead. Around 6 minutes in total will do the job. As you can see, it's nice and strong, nice and stretchy. Now we can ferment it. Pop it in a bowl and take the temperature. 
Around 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. And using the pre-ferment will really speed up fermentation. Only an hour to an hour and a half later, the dough will puff up massively. So blink of an eye later, we're ready to roll the dough out and fill it up. Get your flour ready, get your rolling pin, dust your dough with flour, take it out of the bowl. And you can be quite generous with the flour this time. The dough will absorb quite a lot of it as we're rolling it and pressing it out. And speaking of pressing it out, I always like to start by hand. It's a good way to get your dough in a general shape before you start rolling it. This way you'll ensure that the final dough will be nice and straight. If you start rolling a big ball of dough right away, it's going to get all kinds of wonky. Now there's nothing specific about the rolling here. Just make sure that you don't make it too wide. You want it a lot longer than wider. Don't even roll it to the sides, just roll it up and down. Now brush off any excess flour and we can start adding the ingredients. Start with a nice thick sauce. Dab it around the dough nice and evenly. Now grab your dough scraper and spread it out in a nice thin even layer. We'll make sure to leave an edge at the top. We'll use that edge for sealing up the roll. Right, next up, pepperoni. A quick note on the pepperoni and the mozzarella here. I'm gonna have a little bit left over of each. Because originally, I was planning to sprinkle a little bit of pepperoni and a little bit of cheese on top of the buns just before they come out of the oven. But they ended up looking so nice, I just couldn't do it. So in the recipe, I have written down the exact amount that you need. So don't take note of my leftover ingredients, okay? Right, before we start rolling, what I like to do is just press everything in with the palms of my hands. This will make the rolling job easier. It may seem a bit messy, but it works. And now we're ready to roll. And this part is crucial. You want to be nice and slow, nice and careful. Every time you roll it forwards, pull it back to make it nice and tight. Roll it gradually and evenly. If the dough at the front starts getting a bit narrow, you can push the sides in or you can stretch the dough out at the front. But once you get to the end, brush this edge with water and stick it to the loaf. This will nicely seal it up. And the same goes for cinnamon buns. And if you've made any cinnamon buns before, this process will be very familiar to you. We're simply replacing the sweet with a savory. Okay, clean down the mess. Now put your pizza loaf on the chopping board, get your nice sharp knife a serrated knife works perfectly for this. And grab a little bit of olive oil. We're going to brush this loaf all over. This will prevent the buns from fusing together. It will make it real easy to tear them apart and keep them in one piece. And if you were making cinnamon buns, you will be brushing your loaf with butter. Now when it comes to slicing it up, we're going to start by cutting off the end bits. Because they're mostly empty anyway. They wouldn't look very good. Of course don't bin them, just bake them separately. Because there's nothing wrong with them. Now to cut this loaf into 12 equal pieces, it's a very simple process. First, cut in half, then cut each half in half again, so you end up with four pieces. And then slice each quarter into three. And use a nice smooth sawing motion. You don't want to press the knife straight down. Trust me, no one wants squished buns. Now arrange them on a non-stick paper lined tray. What I like to do is put the bigger pieces on the outside because naturally some will be bigger, some will be smaller and the end bits will go in the middle. This will make the whole thing look a bit more even. Arrange them so there's little gaps between them. And then you can lightly press them down so they're more or less the same height. And that's it, now we're ready for the final proof. And now you want to really let them rise. You want them to be nice and puffy. It took me around an hour and a half. As you can see, they're puffing up beautifully. And during the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven 170 degrees Celsius with a fan on. If your buns have not risen in an hour and a half, leave them for longer. But if they look like this, then brush them with a little bit of oil and get them in the oven. The oil will give the exposed dough just a nicer color. They'll take around 25 to 30 minutes. And once they're puffed up nicely and golden brown all over, they're ready. Now just wait a few minutes for them to cool down and tuck in. And that's how you make pepperoni pizza buns. Of course you can fill them with whatever you like. But let me know what you think of this recipe down in comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And check out my other videos for more delicious recipes. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.